Okay, so today we're going to talk about uh, radio operations in uh, Class Charlie airspace. We're here at Fresno International Airport, which is the Class Charlie, and we're going to go over what it takes to uh, to use the radio to get in and out of the airspace here. So, just going to taxi down here uh, a little ways down the ramp, out away from the hangar, so we have good direct line of sight with the control tower. That way there's no interference on our antennas. Okay, so here we go. Go ahead and stop right here. Get over to the control tower there so we have good direct line of sight. So the first thing we need to do uh, anytime we operate in controlled airspace is uh, call up and get the ATIS. And that's a recorded message. Um, guys in the control tower record that usually on the hour unless there's any significant change in the weather. And it's about 30, 40 seconds long and it just loops over and over and over again. Um, we want to know the wind direction. Um, we want to know if there's any closures on the airport. Uh, and then also, the, you know, the current altimeter setting. So the ATIS re, uh, report has all that information in that. And then at the beginning and at the end, it'll say notify an initial contact. You have information. It'd be Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta. Every hour it changes code. So uh, so what we're going to look for uh, in, in a VFR flight plan, what we're really listening for, we want to know the wind. Uh, we want to know the runways that are in use. And we want to know our current altimeter setting. Now, we have to have the ATIS to do anything on the airport. And we also have to have the ATIS code anytime we come into the airport from out of the area. So for example, if I was coming into Fresno, uh, 20 or 30 miles out, I'd, I'd punch up the ATIS on the radio and I'd, uh, I'd listen to that. That way I could give the, the, uh, the approach controller that um, the ATIS code be when I was uh, making my initial contact to come into the airspace. Otherwise, he'd tell me, he'd, otherwise he would tell me to remain clear until I had the current ATIS code. So we're gonna dial that up right now. It's uh, 12135 here. Broken, temperature so we're coming in kind of in the middle of this, so we'll listen to that this last part, and then we'll pick it up again and get the full ATIS. Here goes an F-16. Okay, so this is ATIS information PAPA, so we're going to listen to it again here. Assembly Airport Information, Papa, 2153 Zulu, wind calm, visibility 5, haze, few clouds, 155. Oh, but now they're, they're switching it over here because it's top of the hour there, so they're switching the ATIS code over. So I'm going to call up and just tell them that we have Papa, and um, we'll set the altimeter to the, the field elevation. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to contact ground control. Um, now you'll notice when we, on the on the ATIS report, it said ground control and clearance are combined on 121.7, so that's kind of important. Um, most airports will have a separate clearance and a separate, or separate clearance and ground control. Uh, Fresno, because it's slow, sometimes they'll combine the two of them. So that's what they did here, is they've combined clearance and ground control. So clearance gives us our clearance out of the airport, out of the airspace. They'll tell us what to do to get out, away from the airport. So we have to get that first, and we'll tell them what we want to do and whatnot. And then we'll go to ground control to get our taxi clearance, okay? So today we're just going to remain in the pattern. So this is a, um, an instrument clearance this guy's getting, an IFR clearance. Guys, 332, Victor, verify that altitude was 10,000. We'll, we'll wait for him to finish up and then we'll, we'll chime in and get ours. Roger, read back, correct. Fresno Ground, good afternoon. Cessna 583 to Juliet. I'd uh, like to go up to do some pattern work. 5832 Juliet, Fresno Ground, Squawk 0150. 0150 for 32 Juliet, and I'm ready to taxi from Pacific with information uh, Papa. This is the 32 Juliet, go ahead and make a right turn and come down towards the tower, an entrance or two, beat that tug, and then uh, you can taxi out Bravo 8 Bravo, turn way 29 left. Okay, I'll uh, come down and beat the tug there, and then we'll go uh, Bravo 8 Bravo 29 left, 32 Juliet. Okay, so he gave us a clearance of uh, Bravo 8, so here comes uh, Bravo 8 right here. Bravo to 29 left, so I'm going to slow down here just a little bit. And we'll take this corner. You never want to take corners too fast in airplanes because they don't, uh, the, the small tires are not really made for cornering, they're made just to go straight. Okay, so here's Bravo 8. Coming up on uh, Bravo. Checking to make sure that nobody's coming either direction. Of a hazy 
busy day today. As I'm taxiing here, I'll just get everything kind of set up. Uh, whoops. Every once in a while, I hit a bump. How does that nose wheel to chatter? These lights in the center of the taxiway here do that. Put these in last year, but uh, sometimes if you hit it the right way with your nose wheel, it'll start to faster a little bit. You have to slow down. So we'll get this set here. It's about right there. Altimeter's set, and that's check. That's good. Got gas. Everything looks pretty good. just the GPS there. Um, you have to go through a couple checks and everything when you turn it on, so I was just hitting enter, enter to get it off of the, the self-check page. Sometimes when you're taxiing, it's a good time to get everything set up for your flight, so you know, if I was going to go someplace, I could punch direct in the GPS here, enter the airport code, get that all set up, uh, get my radio frequencies all set up. If I was going to go um, leave the air, airspace, I would have been given a departure frequency from Clarence. You know, put the, part, the departure frequency in radio number two. Get uh, my nav radio set up. If I'm going to track uh, nav beacons, track some VORs or something, maybe I could put Clovis VOR in here. If it was definitely if it was IFR, uh, you know, we'd be going Clovis VOR for our Fresno 5 departure there. So uh, 120 or 112.9, I can put that in the top. Um, if I had another uh, another beacon or something, I could put it in the bottom. So get everything set up. That way, once I take off and I'm in the air, I can focus on flying instead of looking up all this information and whatnot. Okay, here we are. So we're going to do a really quick, uh, quick run up. We'll bring it up to 1,700 RPM. Lean this back a little bit. This particular aircraft, uh, when you shut it down, it has a tendency to foul the spark plugs. The gas, if there's any residual gas in the cylinders, it'll evaporate, and then the, the lead, because there's lead in the field, the lead will stick to the spark plugs and cause them to foul a little bit. So, as you run it lean for 10 seconds or so. I'll push it back up. Now we'll go ahead and check the mags, and they should be nice and clear. Running really good, which they are. Check the carburetor heat. There we go. Everything checks out. Gauges are checked. Suctions check. Everything's in the green, so we're good to go. Okay, so once we're ready to take off, uh, meaning that if they tell us you're clear for takeoff, we can go right then, not, you know, we need to do our run-up, anything like that. Once you're ready to go, run-up's complete, ready to go, we'll switch over to tower. Here, tower is 118.2. Fresno Tower, Tower 257 Then I'll call the tower up and tell them uh, who I am. Fresno 5832 Juliet, where I am. Holding short of runway 29 left, and I'm ready for takeoff. They're going to come back. They'll tell me I'm either clear for takeoff or hold short. And um, they're going to tell me probably to make left-hand traffic, because this is the left runway, so we'll do left-hand traffic. So here we go. Fresno Tower, Cessna 5832 Juliet, holding short of 29 left, ready for takeoff. Cessna 5832 Juliet, Fresno Tower, runway 29 left, clear for takeoff. 29 left, clear for takeoff, 32 Juliet. Tomahawk 78 Lima, contact departure. Contact departure. Tomahawk. Okay, doors are locked, seatbelts are on. Turn for takeoff, everything's in the green, we've got gas. Looks like we're good to go. Rolling out onto the runway, and it's, you know, it's getting a little bit darker out, so I'll turn, go ahead and turn our nav lights on, and I'll turn our flashers on, too. Okay, here we go. We're going to line up at the center of the runway, give it some gas. As we're rolling, I just make sure that it's in the green on the RPM gauge, and it is. There we go. Everything looks pretty good. Airspeed's coming alive. There's 55 and 60, and we rotate, and we're up. Go ahead and trim for about 75 here, right about like that. It's pretty good. And I'll set up any crab angle or anything that I need to to make sure that we stay on the, uh, the straight extended center line of the runway here. You don't want to encroach over on the other side in case there's other aircraft taking off or coming into land. There we go. Okay, so we're going to climb uh, the 500 AGL, which puts us right at about 800 feet, and then we'll make our turn to crosswind. So. Here it comes, uh, there's 800 feet, and we'll go ahead and we'll make a turn to the left. There 
we go. Go ahead and reduce the power just a little bit here as we're passing through a thousand feet. Okay, we got a good crosswind turn there. There we go. Tower should call us up any minute with our uh, landing clearance here. About three quarters of a mile out, so I'm going to turn down into the downwind. You can see we're coming out of uh, just a little layer here. Pretty typical for Fresno in the, the winter time. Right now it's uh, end of January. We usually have a little bit of a fog layer or something, so that layer is at about 1,300 feet today. So we're coming right out on top. I'm going to go ahead and pull the power back. Juliet, runway two nine left. Uh, the option. Two nine left, clear for the option. Three to Juliet. Okay, so he just told us we're clear for the option. That means we're cleared to do a touch and go or a low approach or whatever we want to do. Um, anytime you get uh, a clearance from ATC that has the runway number or anything having to do with the runway, you have to read that that runway number back. So. If I just said clear for the option 3 to Juliet, that wouldn't really be good two-way communication for a landing clearance because I need to communicate properly to them uh, that I understand that that is runway 29 left, not 29 right. But even if I said, you know, 29 clear for the option, you know, the controller doesn't know if that's left or right, so I need to say 29 left, clear for the option. Okay, we're going to reduce power here. Blow it up a little bit. There we go. We come into the white arc there. I'll go ahead and put down flaps. We don't have any visible moisture today, so I'm, I'm not going to use the carburetor heat. Okay, our landing point's now 45 degrees behind the wing. Make our turn into uh, base. Power back a little bit more here. There we go. Nice and smooth. Down a second notch of flaps. There we go. And we're a little bit high, so I'll get that power all the way out. Better high than low, that's what I always say. Okay, coming down, I always look out and just make sure there's nobody coming in on final. Controllers don't generally make mistakes, but if they do, you want to make sure that you uh, see the other aircraft and make sure you don't uh, end up in a conflict there. A little bit of power here. There's we looks pretty good, or about 70, that's pretty good. Down. Now we're going to make our turn on to uh, final. There we go. We're still a little tiny bit high. That's right, so this airplane, um, we put in three notches of flaps, it drops like a rock, so. We'll keep it at two notches, and there you go, you can see we rolled out right on to final there. We'll put in three notches of flaps. We're getting a little bit low, that's okay though. There we go, and we'll drop our airspeed back down to about 60. This should put us down right about on the numbers. There we go. Okay, and we'll get that power out here. There we go, and touch down, get our flare going, touch down there. Okay, so flaps up, carburetor heat's cold, and we're going to go ahead and give it some power here. There we go. Once again, uh, make sure everything's in the green, looks good there. And there comes 60, and we'll rotate. I'll retrim for our climb. And there we go. Now this time I'm going to request... This time I'm going to request a short approach, so... There's a couple of reasons we do a short approach. Uh, one is to, uh, to save some time, because we have a 7,000 foot runway here. We don't need all 7,000 feet to land our Cessna. We only need about 500 feet to land our Cessna. So um, I can land halfway down the runway and make my taxiway and just taxi straight across instead of landing at the end of the runway and having to uh, the taxi clear way down to the end. So it saves us about five or 10 minutes. There's 800 feet. We'll go ahead and start our turn. I'm gonna go ahead and request the uh, short approach. Fresno Tower, Cessna 3 to Juliet, like to request short approach. Cessna 3 to Juliet. Uh... If you extend your up when I give that to you, there's an ad second about a four mile final coming ahead of you. Okay, we'll do. I'm on a, uh, a crosswind now. Um, I'll just slow down and extend that out a little bit. That's the uh, 3-2 Juliet Roger. Uh, just let you, I'll point out the traffic when you get close. 3-2 Juliet Roger. That's the 3-2 Juliet. You're finding this is, good, uh, is this going to be your last one or are you going to keep going? Yeah, last one, 3-2 Juliet. I'm just 
extending out a little bit here because there's an aircraft on a four mile final. I appreciate you, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll do one more, get the short approach on the next one. That's 3 2 Juliet, Roger. The uh, Aztec's on about a two and a half mile final now. Okay, I'm turning down one dollar, keep an eye out for him. Roger. Okay, so we're coming around here, so that didn't work. Uh, I was going to do a short approach, but uh, there's another aircraft out there, so. We're just going to fly kind of a wide down one. You can see whenever you have. 332 Victor, ready at 2 9 left. Um, Coast 332 Victor, Fresno Tower. I'll sort of reach in our left. Anything with air traffic control, you just kind of talk to them, like, you know. Coast 332 Victor. Like you would talk to anybody else. Aztec 75 Romeo, could you accept runway 29 or right? Uh, that's a firm, 75 Romeo. Aztec 75 Romeo, change to runway 29 or right, runway 29 or right, clear to land. Traffic starting on the left will be 8 for 6. Okay, 29 or right, clear to land, 75 Romeo. Okay, with 332, Victor traffic on a uh, 2 mile final, or make sure 1 mile final, for runway 29 or right is Aztec, runway 29 or left, clear for takeoff. Alright, clear for takeoff, 29 or right, or 29 left, go with 332 Victor. That's 32 Juliet, traffic party, runway 29 or left is 8 for 6. Report traffic in sight. Uh, traffic inside, 3-2 Juliet. So 3 2 Juliet, maintain visual separation from the Priscilla. Caution, wake turbulence, runway 29 left, clear for the option. Okay, I'll maintain visual separation. Uh, 29 left, clear for the option, 3 2 Juliet. Tower, sir, so you go on current. Okay, so I'm looking over there. Go back and There's a Brasilia taking off. I'm going to give myself some space because I'm going to do a touch and go. So, just kind of watching him, and I want to put a couple minutes in between, uh, between the two of us here, so. Go ahead and turn my base. Fresno Tower, runway 29 are right, clear to land. Traffic on about a two mile left base with left runway to Cessna. Clear to land, 29 right, scout 22. Okie dokes, we're coming around here. I'm waiting to put my flaps in because I, I've flown kind of a wide traffic pattern, so I don't want to put my flaps in and then have to. Drag the airplane in with lots of one, uh, report to lots of power. So I know there's a SkyWest jet coming inbound for the opposite runway. So I'm keeping an eye out for him. Three thirty two delay contact departure. Uh, okay, okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll put down one notch of flaps there. Romeo, keep it rolling across my channel. Left ground point seven one off. Across uh, two nine left and uh, contact ground. So five Romeo. This guy was three thirty two Victor contact departure. Parker's got us 332 Victor. There we go. So we're still a little ways out. We're getting a little bit low. So give it a little bit of power. I still haven't put in my second notch of flaps just because we're so far out. If you put down those flaps, you're going to create so much, you know, a lot of drag, and the airplane's going to want to sink. So you know, for a ways out from the runway, there's no sense putting those in and then having to add tons of power, uh, you know, to bring the airplane in. So here we go. We're turning on the final now. We're a little bit high. I'll drop second uh, notch of flaps there. That should put us in there nice. 75, that's perfect. And we'll fall right on to a glide path. There we go. Right on the glide path. A little bit low, that's right that we've got the runway made there, so. I'll come in, I'll put down full flaps. That power out, get it up to about 60 or so. That's a pretty good approach speed for full flaps. There we go. Brings us down nice. We'll turn the nose up a little bit. Get our flare. We'll do like a soft field touchdown. That'll be awesome. Touch it down. Keep that nose up all the way. Until it touches. There we go. Flaps come up. Power goes in. And off we go. We trim the nose down just a little bit. Yeah, I'm looking for 60, and there's 60 right there. We pull up, and off we go. Reach him for a uh, proper climate attitude. Sure, if you want to see the press land, that will be your own risk. I'll set up a little bit of a uh, little bit of crab angle for some wind, so we don't get blown over the other runway there. There we go. That's putting us straight out. Pretty good. Fresno Tower Helicopter 911 Echo Whiskey, spot 3 ready to go to the northwest. Helicopter 911 Echo Whiskey, Fresno Tower, spot 3 clear for takeoff, northbound departure approved. Okay, so we're going up on 800 feet, start a crosswind. 
Tower 3, Sigilate request a short approach. Okay, with the 2660 cross over 29 left and contact ground point 7 off. Cross 29 left and ground point 7 is coming this way. And test 32 Juliet uh, with the EOT. Ah, yes, sir, just a uh, short approach if that's possible. Test 32 Juliet, make short approach from way 29 or left, clear to land. Short approach, 29 left, clear to land, 32 Juliet, thanks. Okay, so I requested the short approach. Uh, he gave that to me, short approach approved for uh, 29 left, and we're clear to land. So, go ahead and get some of this power pulled out here. We'll do a short approach. So, again, short approach, we're just going to come in and uh, just use what we need on the runway. I'm going to try to put it down. We just roll right off of uh, the Bravo 10 taxiway, which will put us straight into our parking. So, saves us five to ten minutes of, uh, of flight time. Get the airplane slowed down here. And one notch of flap. Now, think about the short approach as you're going to be coming over the field, kind of a you know in a bank with uh, with full flaps down. So you got to be kind of careful. Make sure you keep good airspeed, and you don't want to really load the airplane up too much. You don't want to pull back and put a lot of G's on there. So you really have to kind of time your turns. So the way that I do them here at Fresno is I come in and I, uh, I pass between the control tower and the terminal building. So one of the things when you do this, you need to be really careful you don't uh, run into the poles in the parking lot because there's there's some poles out there with uh, lights on them. You can see here we're going to come across the uh, American Eagle jet. Probably going to think we're crazy. Going to go right underneath us here. Put down full flaps. There we go. We'll start our turn. A little bit slow here, so I'm going to add a little bit of power. Nobody's coming. Right over the center line there, just like that. Roll it out. We'll touch it down. Nose high attitude. Bleed off some speed. There we go. Flaps come up. Brakes come on. Pulling back here to get maximum effective uh, braking. It also tilts the wing up a little bit, so um, you get some aerodynamic effect there, too. Building the sheet of plywood up into the air, you know. And here we go. We're off of Bravo 10. 3 2 Juliet, ground point that went off. Go to ground. 3 2 Juliet, soup. Okay, so I just told him uh, we're going to go to ground. But what I have to do, I have to taxi clear the runway. A little bit of wobble there, hit a bump. Uh, taxi clear the runway, which is this whole short line here you can see. We'll taxi on the other side of that. And once the tail, everything's on the other side of that. Then uh, I stop, and I'll call ground, and I'll get a taxi clearance. Now here, we just have to taxi straight ahead, real easy. One of the reasons we do this short approach. So I'll tune up ground, 121.7. Uh, we're clear of the left runway at Bravo 10. I'll let him know that. And uh, tell them that we want to taxi straight ahead. So here we go. Fresno the ground, Cessna 5832 Juliet, clear of 29 left at Bravo 10, length of taxi straight ahead to Pacific. Cessna 5832 Juliet, Fresno ground, taxi straight ahead. Straight ahead, 32 Juliet, see ya. Okay, so uh, he told us just to taxi straight ahead, and uh, that's what we're going to do. Nice, easy clearance there. Build a short approach, that's not one of those things you want to do too much as a student pilot, uh, probably not at all. Um, but as you become uh, more experienced, it's a lot of fun. Definitely breaks up the monotony of a regular uh, you know, downwind base final kind of thing. So, plus it saves you some time. So whenever I come into an airport, uh, you know, if I can do a short approach and make my, I try to time it so that I can make my uh, exit on the taxiway I want to exit on. I just land and boom, roll right off. Saves you a lot of time. It also helps air traffic control out quite a bit. You know, they get you out of the uh, out of the mix there. Land other airplanes uh, right behind you. Okay, so we'll taxi on over here. Pull up into our parking spot. There we go. Okay, well, hopefully that uh, demystifies some of the uh, the radio communications things in the class trial airspace. It's really pretty easy. ATIS, clearance, ground control, tower, and if we left the area, we'd go to departure. Um, that's pretty much it.